Beautiful humans, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers. Because I, at one time or another, was all three, and I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. Let's grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. People, are you ready? Start the show. Start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I Like First podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I got great news. A lot of people have been really enjoying the first part of the conversation that Olivier and I had about Jesus. So, hey, guess what? I got a second part for you of that conversation, and I hope you just really enjoy it. And if this is your first time here, if you're here listening just to the Olivier uh, episodes, I encourage you to subscribe to the show, man, because we talk all things Jesus, jokes, and country. But enough of me. Let's get back to the conversation. All right, let's get it. So you just kind of think of the people that kind of had the that that did plant those seeds, right? And then you kind of want to reach out and like mm-hmm. hit them up, you know. Yeah. And that's why I think Medina hit you up tonight because, and like you said, uh, it might be a seed that sprouts later, yeah. And that and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just really cool to uh, be able to do that for people. Amen. And you realize that. God, like Christ has all the power. We yeah, don't. Exactly. We're, we're, we're not the ones bringing people to Christ. Right. You're planting those seeds, and God's power is bringing those people to Christ. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so sometimes we get self-righteous because we bring a couple friends to Christ, and we're like, oh, man, we're on Oh, yeah, roll. I'm pumped, bro. We're in a roll. Bro, I got— I got we, we should be pumped. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pumped. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm super but pumped. let's remember where the power comes from. Exactly. You know what I mean? It comes from oh, Christ. Always. You know? And so— Man, like, but I'm still trying to be a soul winner. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to be a fisherman of men, I right? Know, like yeah. Peter said, like you know, and just man, I don't know, man. When you come to Christ, you just start burning for Christ, and it's it's a beautiful thing, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, my friend Nick, I don't know, many of you guys know Nick, and um, wonderful guy, man. Nick Wolf. Nick, Nick Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, there you go. Wonderful Nick, person, man. Say his full name. Show some respect. Nick Wolf. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I just figure like there's so many people <laughs> that know him, you know. But yeah, that's my boy, man. And so for him. You know, he, he wasn't born in the church, but he That's at least, good. yeah, he, he knows God, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He, he knows God. He was baptized, you know, Catholic, unfortunately, like a lot of us are. And, um, man, he just has such a soft heart, and he's someone that can easily appreciate what you're talking about. Mm. And so I haven't quite got him to come to church or open his Bible yet, but he's so interested right now. Mm. And that interest is like man yeah and and here's the thing about the interest thing that that's so that's even so good in itself because it is so fascinating even just like it's such a good thing to talk about you know it's like it's so it's so positive and so loving even before people really understand it you know and it's mm-hmm. it's a like even like i said like when when buddy was praying for me my bud trent i felt the spirit move for the first time and i felt good when i went to the car i was like that was fascinating that was interesting and then uh I even think we had like a Bible study one night after that. And I remember going to that and just being like, this was cool, you know, and like, this, this, this is awesome. And, you know, I didn't stick with it. Uh, it was more, I was so, so in the world that I didn't even really understand the weight and the gravity of, of the gospel. Cause I didn't read the gospel. I just, you know, went to the Bible study, you know, some probably Ephesians or something like that, where I was just kind of like, Oh, that's cool. But yeah, man. And that's the thing. It's not all going to happen so fast. And it's, and it didn't happen fast for me. You know, I prayed hard that you, that Armani and that Mikey would be, you know, come to Christ after I did, you know, there was, there was a, uh, a window there where I had nobody, you know, that was like on the same squad, you know? And then once it started happening one by one, I started seeing the fruit. And once I saw the fruit, I was like, Oh, I'm on the right path. And then I'm not only on the right path. I think I'm doing it in the right way. That is a, a way that can reach people that is uh, organic, you know, and that's fun and that's lighthearted and that's uh, personal and that's inspiring. And that's, you know, and like, I don't think my life is like inspi- that inspiring, but you know, to hear people say it is, is really cool because it's like, I'm not sh- like, I'm still inspired. I'm not like trying to inspire, you know what I mean? Like I'd, I'd love, I'd love to, and I love the book that I write and the podcast that I, that I make to be able to do that for people. But I don't want to, like, inspire people to, like, live the way I do. I want them to be inspired to, like, love Christ like I do, you know, Amen. or, like, turn to Christ like I do or uh, just just have your own relationship with Christ because he, he he's the one that, like, changed everything for, yeah. my, for me in my entire life. Like, in one year. It was insane. My whole Amen. year got flipped upside down. And my dog passed away. And, like, I was thinking, I mean, Catherine pointed it out to me that, like, yo, 
if Armani passed away the year previously to being saved, like I would have been a wreck. You know, like I would have like not handled it well. I probably would have drank a lot. I would have like been mad at God. I would have like, cause I didn't understand God then. But if I, since I had that foundation of understanding Christ by, you know, coming to him and being saved and mm -hmm. reading his word, I knew exactly how to cope with it. I knew exactly who to turn to right. during that. And I'll always have that testimony and I'll always be able to help people through a death now because like that, that hurt, you know, I was the yeah. first person that, that passed away in my life that was like smacked me in the face and the heart and like in a million ways, you know, but being able to lean on Christ instead of like lean on the world mm -hmm. and like self-help books or therapy, you know, like, yeah. I think it really helped. And of course, doing this podcast helped and having people listen to it mm -hmm. that were also going through the same thing I was going through. You know, people, he affected so many people, bro. Like, Absolutely. That church for that funeral was packed yeah. during a pandemic, bro. Yeah. Like there was so many people. We couldn't even find parking. I know. And I felt like such, bro, I don't know if I told you this, but I'm sure you, you mean you're with me. Uh, I think you're with me. Yeah. I felt like such a scumbag for not having a shirt that was nice, <laughs> you know, like at my dog's funeral. Bro, tell me how, guys, I, I, I showed up in my wedding shirt. The shirt, the shirt I wore for my wedding that uh, Armani was a groomsman in, so we all had, like, the same shirt. So I was like, oh, I'm going to wear this one. <laughs> I get there. It has stains all over it. What am I doing? <laughs> it was an iron. Like, I was slop. And then I get there, and my dad brought me a shirt. It was too big. I'm over here walking in with this brand-new shirt on, looking stupid. And uh, But, yeah, man, it was just he, he touched so, – Armani touched so many people and so many lives. And – it's just crazy because, like, I think about, like, how much more he could have touched, too. Like, while, like, because he was just coming to Christ that year. Uh, thank God, you know, and he got saved before he got called home, which is, I mean, it almost feel, feels, I mean, obviously it is God's will, but it, yeah. it's kind of proof, mm -hmm. you know? And the fact that, like, he brought his Bible on that same vacation and him and Kelly were reading it on vacation. I know. You know, because, like, Armani was out here. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. Armani on vacation reading a Bible. I know. That's cr like, if you know Armani, that's crazy. Okay. But, he, but he was reading the word, you yeah. know, out there on vacay. And he listened to the podcast while out there. And he texted me that same day because Malachi was going. Um, I was keeping Malachi while Catherine went and saw Haley. He texted me thinking... Um, hey, good luck with Malachi this weekend. You know, I'm praying for you. You know, like, oh, but awesome. he texted me. He was praying for me like two days before he passed away. You know, wow. and it's just like the fact that like that happened and then just being able to, you know, help other people that were struggling, you know, uh, with understanding his death because it was tragic. You know, uh, 28 years old, about to get married, beautiful daughter. Like it was a it was a whole thing of like everybody, you know, the GoFundMe hit like almost sixty thousand dollars for mm -hmm. his family and. The fact that just so many people like leaned on the pod and then in, in other words leaned on god amen and seeing what i had to say and i was you know talking about him but i was more so like trying to get people to you know lean on christ because and then if you remember the um celebration of life how many people talked about christ in their stinking oh my god um like speeches yes about yes, our money yes, every yes. almost every single person said Beautiful. mike lee but every <laughs> Yo, shout out Mike Lee. <laughs> shout out Mike Lee. He gave a great speech. Yeah, he had a good, and he was on the on the fly. Like that, that, that was bold. That was from the heart. That was from the heart. That, that was that was impressive. He was on the fly. His, uh, Armani's dad, Paco, he called up Mike Lee. He's like, Mike, you got anything you want to say? <laughs> Bro, I respect Paco for doing that. By nah, the way, I do too. Yeah, absolutely. Like I didn't even think about that until just now. But yeah. like, like Paco's the man because he 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 knew Mike's heart and he knew that Mike, you know, wanted to say something but probably felt like he couldn't. Absolutely. And, like, just put him on the – bro, Paco's the man, dog. He is, man. I love Paco. And the fact that he was, like, praying beforehand and afterhand of everything mm -hmm. and um, – Gave the bracelets out. Got the bracelets out. That's where the famous uh, What Would You Jesus Do bracelets came from. And, yep. uh, you know, many of you know I, I actually am giving them out a lot now. Yeah, and awesome. I actually pray over people before I give it to them. But That's perfect. Yeah, I mean – And that's, that's, that's also, Armani. like, the spirit of Armani, too. Amen. You know, it's like his hand's going to be on that, too. You know, Absolutely. like – And I don't really know. Like, I don't want to, like, act like I know much about, like, the afterlife of, like, if Armani's, like – you know, I know he's he's you know he's with Christ. You know, um, and I'm still kind of working on understanding that mm -hmm. as far as doctrinal positions and stuff like that. What happens after? Uh, but like, also, I do feel like he has some kind of like influence on that, and that mm -hmm. the, the, his spirit can actually like kind of help, um, you know, lead those people to Christ as well. Because you know, that's that's who he is through us. You know, like Absolutely. we had the bracelets because he used to wear them all the time, and he got me one. Like he got me one because I liked his. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's so that. sweet. You know, it's crazy. You just yeah. said that. And that's exactly how people react to me when they see mine. Really? Yeah. They want one. 
and yeah. it, I feel great, but I'm just like, hey, it's not a fashion statement. Right. I mean, it is kind of dope, but it's the meaning behind it, right? Yeah, for sure. So I love that it's it's something. It's a talking piece. Like when people see it, they're like, wow, I want one. Mm-hmm. And then I start. I'm like, hey, like let's talk about Jesus. Do you know Jesus? Mm-hmm. And like, and I pray for them, and I, you know, they start telling me about their uh, testimony of whether they know him or not, and maybe they want to come to him to know him, and maybe they don't. But like, that's what I want to. That's what I want to get to. I want to get to people's testimony. You know, mm-hmm. I want to get to. Uh, where people can relate to other people's, you know, life um, journeys, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and kind of, uh, if they can do it, I can. Right. Kind of thing, yeah, you know tell I mean? that, didn't you say about uh, the scripture that was so powerful about people's testimony with Jesus, what he was saying? Oh, 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 yes. So, um, you know, for many of you who read the Gospels, um, one thing that, like, is beautiful about reading the Bible is that certain things stick out to certain people, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's great to to get along with um, with certain Bible reading Christians and uh, and, and talk about it. You know, talk about uh, doctrines and talk about what Christ did for us and just talk about what um, you're getting from Scripture. And we do that often. I love it. And um, so for me, reading the Gospels, one thing that I realized throughout the whole um, time that Jesus was on earth was that every time that Jesus healed a person, um, that person obviously, you know, turned up, turned up, man. (laughs) Like You know, (laughs) he healed so many people. I lost count. But uh, after each time. Um, that person would be so convicted to want to follow, you mm-hmm. know, follow Jesus. So they would ask him, you know, I want to come with you. I want to, you know, I want, I want, I want to walk with you. And Jesus would look at them and tell them, I want you to go back home, and I want you to tell them what the goodness of the Lord has done for you. Right, right. And that's so powerful because that's that's in, in relation to testimonies. That's mm-hmm. your testimony, right? That's th- they got that physically. They got that in the flesh. Yeah. And so we we don't have that. We have the Holy Spirit, and we have God moving through, you know, the Spirit and 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 and, and in that way. But I mean, think about how powerful that is, right? Because yeah. what that does is that that brings other people to Christ. If they know that, wow, Jesus healed this sick man, Jesus healed this sick woman, right? Through the faith that they had in the Savior, what is that going to do when he comes back home, mm-hmm. when he sets back foot and tells them how he possibly can see again after being blind? Right. Or being cured of that incurable you know, disease that they had in their body bleeding for 12 years. I mean these are amazing things that he was doing and what he wanted them to do is go back and tell mm-hmm. them what the Lord has done for them. Yeah. That's so powerful. That it would bring other people. Right. So that's yeah. where I got my idea for testimonies and why it's so powerful. Mm-hmm. And for this next season, that's what I'm going to be devoting my time and effort to Heck is to yeah. diving into people's testimonies in hopes that it will bring the next person to Christ, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times that, you know, people feel like their testimony and their story is, um, it's not, not worthy. It's yeah. not important. No, it's important. We're all humans. We're all going through the same emotions at different times. We all are going through hurt from certain traumas. Um, and we can relate to each other because we've gone through certain traumas together or separate. But we can, right. you know, we can we can re- unite on those. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so uh, me and you, you know, we, we get into very uh, deep conversations about um, you know, our childhoods and that kind of stuff and our traumas and all that kind of stuff. And we all have them. We all do yeah. certain, you know, varying sure. degrees. And, and for me, um one thing about a testimony is that it's so beautiful because it's never your testimony is never a, a defining um, like story of, of who you are. Mm-hmm. It's who you used to be. Right. It's who the enemy was was trying to define you as. Right. Ooh, that's and, good. And I think a lot of people, um, and I, I, I'm, you know, I might get some flack for this, but um, like LGBT and all that kind of stuff. Like, ain't nobody gonna give you flack on the I Like Bird show. <laughs> We we some real ones out here, all right? Not nah, mine. You might get some black. <laughs> if somebody listens this far in, uh, then they chop and screw and send it to somebody. I don't know. In general, though, no. The enemy tries to tell people who they are. Yeah, That's what the enemy does, identity, right? Yeah. He attacks your identity. Tries to tell you, um, you know, you're all your mistakes and mm. you are what you've been, and it's so wrong because yeah. your identity is in Christ, and mm. Christ is the only one that can un- uncover your identity for you. Right. And for people who are coming to Christ, they know what I'm talking about. And for you who haven't come to Christ yet, please, yeah, just I implore you, please come to Christ yeah. to know your purpose, to know who you really are, because Christ has that, mm-hmm. right? It's like it's like that that game you had, and it was like that unlockable character that you wanted to get, and you're just you didn't know who it is, but like yeah, the only way to get that, the only way to get yeah. that is you gotta, you know what I mean? Yeah, let so. me let me ask you a question about this. Then uh, it's kind of re- re- uh, related to that. So when it comes to like being Christ like, do you feel that you have to since knowing Christ, do you feel like you have to consciously decide that or work on that? For instance, I'll give you an example. So 
with Malachi, like I, I kind of have a, um, like my patience is low. My, um, my, my compassion and my grace is not there sometimes whenever he does something that I feel like is a little exaggerated or I don't like, or if I'm just not in the mood to deal with like, like him reacting poorly to something. So, but in order to act Christ, like I have to have those patience, that, that quality, that, the fruit of the spirit, I have to have the patience, mm-hmm. I have the self-control, I have to have the, um, the, the, the control of my tongue, you yeah. know, all the, all those things. So maybe let me ask this for you. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that in order to be Christ-like, you have to make the decision to be Christ-like mm-hmm. in that moment? Or do you feel like Christ does it through you the more that you know him? And it happens naturally, or do you feel like you have to kind of like pause and remember that you are what Christ is in you? Do you know what I mean? That's a great question. Because I'm I'm kind of like kind of working through that, and I want to. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, that's powerful. That's very powerful for me. um, And we talked about this recently as well, because I had lunch with um, with someone recently that um, we dove into this a little bit, and that was about um, the qualities of of just people in general. And how we all have Christ-like qualities. Whether mm-hmm. we know God or not, we do. Because why? We were made in his image, mm-hmm. right? So whether we know Christ or not, we still have that. He made us. And so um, for me, when, it, when the question you asked about um, you know, whether you consciously do that in the moment or you allow the spirit to move you, you absolutely allow the spirit to move you. I think we do it sometimes on our own whim and we try to, um, take those moments to like stop and realize and those are great moments too because mm-hmm. we're doing it out of like our will you know what I mean but I think when you want something to change and you want a quality that, that you know Christ um, is calling you to improve upon I think allowing him to take that burden and allow the spirit to move through you is the yeah. only way that that changes for good Right. you can do it on your own for a little bit mm-hmm. but you can't sustain it Right. Christ is the one that can sustain that for you. Right. So it's just like uh, with giving him your problems of like maybe anxiety or depression or um, those kind of things. You asked me a good question out there, too. Um, and I, I can't remember what it was. It was. Um, oh, yeah. We never got back to it. We never got back to it. And that, that kind of ties in with this, too. You remember what, what you asked me out there? Um, oh, hearing God speak and what that yes, looks like. Yeah, yes. And you're like, so that this this is very relatable to what we're just talking about, because um, when God speaks to you, people are like, oh, you know, like people think like, oh, like he's actually like, you Audible. know, you, yeah, like you, you can hear him like, no, it's, it's a spirit. It's, it's, it's a sense of, um, of peace. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a sense of, um, sureness. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the, um, the eradication of like depression where you do eradication of anxiety. Um, those kind of things, when you have the peace of the Lord, um, he starts transforming you and you don't even realize it. Yeah, that's how you know you're becoming a new creation, right? Mm-hmm. When you're not actively trying to change on your own behalf, like you're not mm-hmm. using your own fallen nature to try to catch yourself, right? Yeah. And we've talked about this even with sin, and we, you know, I've I've talked about like um like pornography and yeah. you know and, and that kind of stuff, and how you know as men sometimes we all sh- we have all probably struggled with that. Maybe some of you haven't, um, but we try to um you know neglect that desire of the flesh to wanna engage in that Mm -hmm. right and we can do it for maybe a week maybe two weeks maybe three weeks and then we fall into that temptation right yeah and that's just because the spirit i mean not the spirit the flesh is so weak Mm -hmm. right but the spirit is what we need Mm -hmm. to keep us away from that and the spirit is the only thing that's to sit back that can supply us with the the strength to overcome that right we can't do it on our own And, and i think as christians sometimes we fall into that trap of thinking that we can do it all on our own and no, we need the, the, the spirit of Christ. We need the power of Christ yeah. to, to be dwelling within us, to be sanctified, to be holy. Yeah, I ask Christ to help me with everything, bro. Even Have when to. it comes to like my last ep- one of my last episodes about uh, being on the phone too much. I had to ask him to help me like mm-hmm. with that because I was like, I legit didn't feel like I could do it myself. No, I was like can't. glued to it, you, you know. And if you could do it yourself, you'd be your own God. Yeah, exactly. So I asked him for help and he helped me with it already, right. like off rip, you know, and um, down 27 percent in one week. <laughs> What's good, bro? Come Let's on go. Now. Uh, next week is going to be even lower. Uh, but And then um, I'm trying to, you know, start, like, doing a workout regimen. Uh, regimen. Regimen. Uh, regimen. <laughs> uh, when, um, like, I started before you got here, and we've been doing the hikes and stuff and staying active. And I'm trying to get, like, back in shape for the summer when Noah's here. And I'm like, yo, God, I need help. Like, uh, like help me stay committed. Help me stay, like, when Noah's here that we're both working out together outside after coffee and breakfast, you know. Mm-hmm. And just... 
asking him for help with everything because like yeah man i'm i'm weak you know i'm just i can do it like you said i can do it for a week two weeks and then boom i'm, I'm back, right back at it and i've always had good like if i put my mind to it i can do it mm-hmm. but a lot of times it's like i'll put my mind to it and i want to do it but i'll stop wanting to do it after a while yeah. and therefore it's like my mind will just be like i don't want to do that it's anymore. your flesh yeah exactly it's yeah. just like you just kind of fall off into your own kind of like you switch lanes of like what you want and what you desire and like right. i don't really want to look good anymore i'm cool with how i look i'm married i got kids I'm, I'm a dad like whatever you know but then you're like all right let me tighten up but like i need god to help me tighten up you know what i mean I, I can't just do it myself and a lot of that is you know just believing that he will do that you know and he might not do it right away but eventually like you know when it's his time and he will and i'm sure he'll help me with the working out thing uh mm-hmm. quicker than he'd help me with you know uh changing my entire life around you know but right. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going with that. But, yeah, asking God help for everything is, Absolutely. is the move. And, yeah, hearing God speak like that, that peaceness and that calmness. But you can't ex- really experience that if you're over here, like, not getting his presence and not getting in his word and not right. getting in that relationship and not getting those, we call it God meals on mm-hmm. the show. You know, you have to really take in the presence and take in the spirit mm. in order to be able to see the fruit of that spirit in your own life, in your own character, in your own personality, in mm-hmm. your own uh, words, in your own thoughts thoughts are a huge one my thoughts used to be very very poor yeah my thoughts used to be very not like suicidal but like just kind of like just down and out you know what i mean and i sometimes fall into a little funk but i'm quick to recover now because of christ you know like i know what my body needs and what or my mind needs and my heart needs uh i need jesus so i like immediately find a way to get jesus into my life throughout that day and it completely is like, all right, here we go. We're back onto the frequency of where we need to be right. to be able to knock this day out, knock this podcast out, knock what we got to knock out, Amen. print some shirts, mm-hmm. send them out, <laughs> you do know, some research. You I know? got a good example, right? Yeah. So when we get, when we have a problem, right, we have a problem we're trying to overcome. And, uh, you know, we, we may confide in a friend, a good friend. You and I, we do that at times. Yeah. We call each other, tell each other what's on each other's minds, what plans we have, what dilemmas we're facing. Mm. And we'll, you know, dilemmas. I may have. We got yeah. dilemmas, bro. We, we do. You know, we, we all got do. dilemmas. <laughs> <laughs> you might be facing a dilemma, and you know, you might ask me, "Hey, like, what do you think about this?" And you know, I give you some, you know, some advice, and vice versa. But how, how beautiful is it that we come to a realization that we can just talk to Jesus, like mm-hmm. we talk to one of our friends, yeah, and that we can, and that He possesses the power, and the ultimate truth, and the ultimate solutions. For for our problems yeah you know what i mean and that's that's the worldly that's the flesh versus the spirit right now mm-hmm. you know what i mean asking your friend for advice yeah maybe he can give you some godly advice right maybe he yeah. can give you some sound doctrine to get you by for a couple of days mm-hmm. but if you're not talking to jesus who has the power to really help you mm-hmm. to really solve that issue or that dilemma then what are we doing yeah. and we got to remember guys this is a powerful thing to really think about is that that christ is omnipresent Oof. so he all around, you know, so it's like mm-hmm. you think he ain't listening, bro. He's right there. He knows before he's you, right the problem there. came. Yeah, you know and he mean? knows your thoughts in your heart. But like even like we were saying the other day, that spoken word uh, goes so much further. You know, your words have a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, with you guys, I always tell you guys so much on the show about when I'm writing. That's when I feel like I am talking to Jesus. And that's when I am in my um in like my prayer time I'm in my bag you know Olivia Olivia just held up his bag I'm in my bag you know and I have to like write that's the way I kind of express myself my writing has gotten uh, a lot better not just through the show but through in other ways of just even just journaling and doing my freelance writing work because of knowing Christ and Christ gave me that ability to be able to uh you know, he gave me that um, that skill, you know, and that skill isn't for me, though. It's for him. And once once I realized that and I realized that, like, yo, like the book that I write isn't it's going to be about me, but it's more so going to be about Christ, you know. Uh, and then my next book is going to be about somebody else, but it's also going to be about Christ, you know, and always just kind of having that focus on. And it helps you kind of being able to even have that relationship with him and talk to him yourself when Amen. you when you kind of realize what your your gift of the spirit is. You know, for Catherine is dancing. So, like, she'll be over here, like, dancing and worshiping and, like, you know, getting in her bag, you know, when, when she'll put on some, some Jesus music in the morning and stuff like that. Especially when it's just her and Malachi and I'm kind of, like, in the cut. You know, I'll look out and I'll see her just kind of moving and dancing with Malachi to a, a song called Revivals in the Air mm-hmm. or Egypt. And uh, she's just out here. So, it's like everybody has a different gift of the spirit. You know, and, and everybody can talk. You know, everybody can can pray. Everybody can can read and think and ask questions, you know, and like have God answer them to you 
through that peace, through that revelation, through that uh, that that friend that's going to send you a verse the next day and be like, oh, boom, there it was. You know, yeah, or, keep those friends close. Those yeah. are special people. For sure. Yeah. And you've actually gotten a lot better at asking me questions over text messages. Yeah. You ask me questions now. Of like, how is your day today? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, who is this? <laughs> That's the spirit moving, bro. I know, because you're not like that. You no. know, you weren't like that, at least. And mm -hmm. uh, you were very, like, I don't know, aloof? I don't, I don't even know the word to kind of put. No, I mean, no, we're, we're, we're homies. You know, we're best friends. Absolutely. But, like, I, I still, like, our conversations over the, like, I mean, texting, I don't really even keep that really, like, to heart or anything. But just, like, the fact that you, you, you show that you care now mm -hmm. more about, like, what other people have to say instead of us just kind of talking on the same on the same wavelength right. you're, you're like all right i kind of want would would see like what are he's getting into today or what'd you do this weekend right, you know like right. you keep the convo going yeah. and even though like you probably don't like texting or I hate texting. exactly i don't like it either <laughs> I do. but at the same time it's like you know sometimes you just gotta text your friend instead of call because it's like Absolutely. you're busy with life and mm -hmm, stuff so mm -hmm. checking in and whatnot but that's also like a great attribute to be able to to um to show that that's Christ like and, and and you know what bro it's not off, off of my own strength doing that it's mm -hmm. not me like writing it down like I need to do no it's it's Christ honestly working changing. through you he's yeah, working changing. through me yeah. man like I'm when when they say after you get baptized and you come to Christ and, and you devote your life to him he, he transforms you without you even knowing it like right. there's work to be done don't get me wrong there's due diligence that we all you know are required to to, to enact but Christ will do the majority of the work for you if you let him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Especially when you're a baby like we are. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've i changed so much in such a small amount of time. And the only reason why I know that is because I have friends like you who remind me of, wow, of what I was, of who I was mm -hmm. before I came to Christ. Right. And sometimes as, as a believer, you don't realize that until other people start taking note and kind of express that to you. And you're like, whoa, you're right. Like, whoa, I am kind of changing. And mm -hmm. so to, to circle back to your question, yeah, like a lot of things happen and you don't know, like God's moving all the time mm -hmm. and you don't realize it, but other people are taking note and they're realizing like, yo, this kid is becoming a new creator. Like he's changing. He's, yeah. you know, he's being more loving. He's being more understanding. He's more patient, you know? Yeah. And I've noticed even myself, like this is just something that just popped in my head just now. I've noticed that like, man, I'm just so big into like speaking truth right now because I think that Jesus just gives me that bold power to be able to do so. And I don't feel like I have a huge platform, but I have enough people that are kind of like watching what, you, what I have to say, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, which is a blessing and I like appreciate that so much and I'm so grateful for it, you know, uh, but I've even found myself like, like kind of having realizations of like, I'll go to post something on my story that's about like either politics or like the vaccine nonsense or uh, something that's just not right and that they're basically you can just tell that the media is lying to you, you know, I like to just kind of like let people know to check my stories that sometimes mm -hmm. so like just hey look at it from this angle real quick like this is like not what they're telling you it is here it is you know i like to do that but i've also found myself like recently as the more i'm like you know just getting in my bag with jesus out here on the rv thing it's like what is that doing though like you know it's like yeah that might help you know wake somebody up you know and whatnot and just see a different angle but like instead of posting about that i could just be posting something about christ and like you know having having like that positivity of him you know like letting them kind of impact their day you know and like even with you posting that bible um quote when you were in the airport the other day yeah uh you got the message from medina a few uh like hours later maybe he saw that and like it inspired him to like let you know like yo i'm reading too you know and like right. doing something like that might spark a seed as well love that for somebody as well so mm -hmm. it's just like you start to realize like who you want to be and who christ kind of wants you to be you know like I don't even really know who I want to be anymore. I don't even kind of think about that anymore. I'm just kind of like going with it right now. I'm on this like wave of, of you know, yeah, I want to be a writer. I want to write books. I want to be a pastor. I want like, like, but I don't want that because I want that. I want that because I feel like Christ has put that calling on my life to be able Amen. to do that. Amen. And the, the, and I'm blessed because I, he, he gave that to me. I think he gave that to me early to pull me out of something though you know what i mean that's powerful. so he pulled he gave me that calling to pull me out of the stand-up thing mm -hmm. because like if stand-up went back like came back and i realized the calling like you know like it might have been uh you know i would have chosen the wrong road and the wrong path but he he pulled me out like and it was just it's crazy the way it happened yeah. and um i shared on this podcast recently the story about the snake in my in my garden yeah did you hear that one yeah of course. okay oh my I, gosh yeah. all right maybe i told you in person before yeah but, i think you did um, facetime or something yeah story yeah the story was crazy and it was just like there was so many things that happened around the beginning stages of of uh being saved by christ mm -hmm. and like having that calling and asking for signs and um asking for uh clarity as mm -hmm. far as like yo is this because bro like thinking about it and still to this day thinking about it of like 
Zach Rippey trying to go for being a pastor after doing com comedy, you know, for three years and doing hip hop music and, you know, trying to do a police officer. Like so many different paths have led me here. And it's like I felt so um, unqualified, inadequate, yeah. uh, just unknowledgeable. Um, I didn't, you know, experience, you know, like I didn't know Christ as long as I feel like I should. And then to have that and then I'm like, God, please, like, show me that you're serious. You know, like I need. And he gave me sign after sign after sign. You he gave it. me. Also, I was nervous to, like, tell my in-laws about it. You know, I was like, you know, because I didn't want to like I don't I didn't want to tell somebody that I'm going to do that. And then I changed my mind, you know. Cause that's like terrible, you yeah. know, like, I don't know. And I, and I asked God, you know, like, yo, make sure, like, I wanted to be like, I have this expression. I'm going to say it, whatever. Uh, well, it's like, I don't like to decide something until it's a hell. Yeah. Instead of a, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be a hundred percent, like, let's do this. Let's right. go. You know? So I wanted my bar to be all the way full. I was leaving my buddy Jeff's house after I told him I like was thinking about becoming a pastor and he was like super encouraging and yeah. We were like getting nerdy, like talking all day about it. And he was like, you're one of the people that can actually reach people because you're real and like this, this and that. You have no, you're you're no BS. You're like this. You're, you're, and he was like giving me all the love, showing all the love about it. And like he kind of hyped me up. And then so I was like on the way home and I was driving and I put on um, bro, I put on NWA's uh, album. Right. Because oh I love hip hop. Right. So I put on NWA because it just came out on Spotify. Uh, for the first, or no, I don't think it was NWA. I think it was The Chronic. It was The Chronic by Dr. Dre. So I put it on. I started listening to it. One song in, I was like, I don't want to listen to this right now. I want to listen to worship. So I changed it to worship. And then as soon as I did, the spirit hit me in the car. Boom! Hit me so hard. Confirmation. And I just started crying, crying hard. And it wasn't even like a song that like, you know, you listen to a song, the song does it. It was just God doing it. And then as soon as like I felt the spirit in my mind i had a picture of like a you know like when you're playing a video game and you have like a bar and it has juice in it like for yeah. your stamina like my stamina went from like 60 to 100 of uh like being all in mm -hmm. you know and like once that bar was full of being all in i cried even harder because i was like oh my gosh i'm really about to do this with my life like i'm really about to change my entire everything i worked for for three years doing stand-up yeah. everything we moved out here for has mm -hmm. been completely shifted and i i was driving and I just remember, um, this this is crazy too. I was driving mm -hmm. on the highway. I merged onto the highway, and I I, I, I needed one more sign. <laughs> I was like, God, <laughs> give me one more sign. And I swear I'm driving, and my neck turns. I didn't move my neck. My neck turns, I, and I look, and at my eyes vantage point were directly at a church with a huge cross. Dude, you never Boom. told me this. Wow. I know. I, I don't think I've ever told That's anyone powerful. this. Yeah. I told somebody about the, I think I told Catherine about my bar being full wow. and like crying and whatnot, but, um, maybe I did. I think I told her the whole story actually, but the, um, I, yeah, I look and it was like, I didn't turn my neck. It was some, it was the spirit turning my neck. And then I, and then I was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm doing this, you know, get home. I feel like overwhelmed and stuff. I think I even got in my Bible that night when I was just like, wow, I'm really about to do this. And then uh, it was it was just one of those things where it just like blew my mind. But and then I told my in-laws and then they were just so supportive. My father-in-law cried when I told him, bro. Wow. And I was like and they were just so happy and so ecstatic about it and whatnot. And because um, I was just nervous to tell them because it's like, I don't know. I just I always worry about like, oh, am I able to provide for their daughter? You know, like and, you know, and like luckily, like we have a great relationship now. And uh they they love me and we have like our own relationship and it's been great but um i was nervous to tell them but they gave me like really like they they you know they were very encouraging and uplifting and yeah. stuff like that and like they didn't make they didn't make me feel like i was crazy i because i thought i was crazy yeah. i was seriously like am i crazy like i've only known jesus for two months and i feel this calling um and then yeah they just kept lifting me up and i i no longer felt like i was like super doubting myself at that point and then once I felt that, then the podcast revelation came up, came about. And tell me how I'm just outside, you know, because COVID, like, we were just outside, you know. I was sitting out there outside, and I just said, I like birds. I was sitting out there saying, I like birds. Wow. You know, like, because we have birds in our backyards. And I just realized, like, you know, when the world was slowed down, you just kind of realized, like, how, what you love and, like, like what you actually still enjoy. That, And I said, I like birds, you know. And I've always had a thing for birds for some reason. Um, and then... I put it on my, my, my Twitter bio. I like birds. That's it. I just left it because it's just like, it kind of made me laugh, kind of made me giggle. And the next thing you know, I'm thinking of like, the podcast came to my mind, you know, and I was thinking about, Jeff was about to start a podcast and I was like, man, I kind of want to start one too. I don't know what to do it about. Like, and then uh, God put it on my heart when I was reading the word 
to be able to just start the podcast and like tell people what I know about like what I read because I was mind blown I had nobody to like talk to I was telling Catherine but she kind of knew about it already also she's kind of like one of those people where like she don't like to get deep until she's ready to get deep you know Mm. so I'm over here like getting deep she's over here like yo can we just have breakfast you know what I mean (laughs) so (laughs) so like you know she's very respectable and like respectful of like you know she'll listen to me but she doesn't really add like much to it you yeah, know like yeah. she kind of already knows she has such a good foundation of, of the course. word already because of the dance programs she was in and the school she went to and stuff like that so she already knows the word she already knows jesus you know so it was like not talking to like a like a wall but it kind of felt that way in a way yeah. just because she wasn't giving much back she would give me a little bit but not what she's I probably busy, busy being that amazing mother <coughs> she is as well so bingo you know yeah, she was yeah. out here just focused she's on our in. child she was locked in bag. and uh she was really happy for me and she was like you know when i told her about uh, it, she gave me like encouragement. She's like, just make sure that you really like that. You're really sure, you know, like you don't want to like change your mind and all mm-hmm. the, yeah, you're, you're right. I don't. Uh, so then, uh, fast forward, I started doing the, like, I was thinking about doing the podcast being like, I th- actually thought about let's grow in our faith together mm-hmm. as the, the name. But then like, I like birds just kept popping in the head, bro. And then yeah. all of a sudden I was like, I like, Bible, I like words. Oh, I like words. Let's go. You know? And then the Holy spirit was like the, the representation was a bird. And then it was just cool how it all kind of came together. And then, bro, I'm telling you, when I started the pod, I thought, like, four people would listen. Wow. And then I saw, like, the first one got, like, 40 off rip. And I was like, oh, that's kind of solid. You know, and then I just kept going with it. And then it just kept growing and growing. And uh, it was just it was just incredible. And I just couldn't believe that, that God chose me to, like, talk about his word, Amen. you know. And, you know, and it's cool because I feel not to get, like, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little wordy, chatty on you. But, no, you're good, brother. Um, I got really like a really full really good understanding of reading the new testament just one time you know i got like i felt like i was grounded in the word mm-hmm. from just reading it once yeah. you know and of course i've read it you know more more than once at this point now mm-hmm. uh and not saying like the whole thing more than once but different parts of it i've read john like three times and some of the epistles a few times romans and all that anyway so i just go back and back i love the new testament it's hard for me to get into the old testament but it's just one of those things you know i'm an old testament i know right i love i gotta get better at it because if i'm gonna be a pastor i I need to read it because if i and i've read some of it it's not enough um if i'm gonna be a pastor i have to sing and read it you know so um it's just crazy that all of it happened so fast and it was just like god i think had to do that because i'm one of those people that feels like i have to pursue something and i have to like have um a destination and, or, and a journey to, to pursue. I've always been very like, you know, entrepreneurship and self-motivated with the websites and all that. So, uh, I've, it's just so, it's so much better doing what you're already good at and doing it for Christ and yeah. like him giving and realizing that your gifts are for him. You know, it's not for us, Amen. you know, it's like as awesome as it is to be a good writer and whatnot. It's like, it's even better when you write something and then people are like, Yo, I love that at last episode. I had no idea that we were the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. And getting a message where it just kind of rocks your world. Did, but, bro, I sent you that message. Remember sure. I sent you that message with a girl? Was um, You never responded to it. I sent, man, maybe you didn't read it because I, sent, I sent you a screenshot of this girl. Uh, I'm not going to say her name here, but I checked up, up on her after um, like years of not talking to her because my mom mentioned her to me, right? Uh, and I was like, man, I haven't talked to her in a while. Uh, let me let me check in. I checked in on her. Tell me how she was like thinking about killing herself. And then I checked in on her. She saw it as a sign from God to stay Whoa. alive. Whoa! I don't know how I missed that text, but wow. Yeah. I know, bro. That's it was powerful. heavy. Yeah. So I, I screenshot it and I'm I'm gonna save it forever because it was just That's incredible. God intervening. And she told me she listens to the podcast and she loves it and it helps her like so much and like wow. she was like going through it and like the fact that like the like a voice for God reached out to her mm-hmm. like. Is, is what like That's kept powerful. her i know it was one of those things it was like one of those like uh messages that like a rapper would like screenshot and be like yo these, these things sit you know like right. it felt like that where like my music saved you know mm-hmm. but it was like one of those things where it was like like it was god checking in on her because uh like my mom randomly sent me a like a dude my mom sent me a picture of her mm-hmm. and said that i clicked on her page you know her like her stuff is so funny like who is this and it was like I was like, oh, me and her used to be homies back in high school. I haven't talked to him forever. Let me actually wow. hit her up, you know? So yeah. I hit her up at, like, 1 in the morning, bro. Wow. And, you know, you're a married man. You shouldn't do that. But, I mean, she's she's not, like, somebody. Anyway, <laughs> what am I talking about? She's not somebody I would cheat with, you know? Like, <laughs> but No, but I'm saying, like, right. you know, like, we were, like, best buds. You know what I mean? That's so cool. I hit her up, and I was like, um, I was like, hey, my mom just, like, this is so random. This is late. And I checked in on her. I was just showing love. I was, like, asking how she's doing and stuff like that. And. 
it just all like worked out well it was like one of those things where um it just powerfully happened or organically it was natural and i just i just couldn't believe that she sent me what she sent me you know like and uh it was just one of those things where it's like there's always fruit that comes from the pods bro and it's like i can't believe it sometimes still because i'm just in here like by myself with god writing a podcast and then giving it to people and it's not like this huge thing it's not like joe rogan experience or anything like that but it's like it has an audience and it has people that listen and come back for it and tell Mm -hmm. people about it and it grows little wings on its own Mm -hmm. and it has things like that where it's like it doesn't matter how many people listen to it It doesn't matter that i make zero dollars from it so far besides the shirts it doesn't matter uh if it if you don't feel like it's going the way that you that you think it should be going god's got all of it you know god's taking care of it and he's giving you and showing you like what the impact is having on other people based on the gifts that he gave you to glorify him amen i love that brother i know it's yo that that, that that whole spill just now brother just like was so beautiful because it just highlighted more so the fact that god is the one that gives you con- your conviction mm-hmm. to find him and when you find him he gives you your identity right and that's what god gave you that's so and true so yeah. it's such a beautiful like testimony that you have yeah and um thank you man it's just a testament to like how amazing our god is right Mm -hmm. and how amazing you allowed him to expose and introduce you to your identity yeah because before you knew him you didn't know your you didn't know what your purpose was Mm -hmm. and look at you now uh, how many people you're reaching your platform you know what i mean such a beautiful thing but you would have never been able to be there had christ had you not found christ and had he not put that in your heart right right and how beautiful is that right i know it's so cool and i think that i think People are just like, oh, like, you know, when you come to Christ, like, you're, you know, you're going for, you're glorifying him and you're giving him thanks and you do. Yeah, but Christ is doing a lot in you as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you're getting a lot of, a lot of realizations that you had not gotten before. And I know th- I've had the same, you know, and listening to you just now is just like amazing, man. I mean, I, people can't see my face, but I was just like amazed because yeah. I didn't know like a lot of the stories and like, wow, man. Yeah. I try powerful. to share as much as I can that happens like that, but sometimes it's like hard to bring it up. You right, know? Right, right. So like, it's just interesting telling somebody like a face to face that, mm-hmm. you know, so that w- it felt good to like get it off. Cause I haven't even, t- I haven't even told Catherine about that yeah. message. I got it. And we were like busy doing something. Wow. Uh, she, we were with her, her brother and um, sister when I got the message uh, in the car and I didn't want to be like, I just got this message, <laughs> you know, like in front of them, you know, like with the kids in the car, right. she said, she, you know, and, um, and she does listen to the show, so maybe she's listening to this. And, like, man, it's just – it's powerful stuff that that people that you never expect to listen to your show listen to your show. You know, and that's why I encourage you to start your podcast because mm-hmm. people are going to – you think Nick and Jess and um, Johnny Rios and, and Steven Medina are going to listen to your podcast, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, it's people that you've touched that you never – like, some dude you probably worked at Firehouse might give it a chance yeah, one day yeah. and be like, yo, I really like this. This mm-hmm. is, like, somebody I know who I really enjoyed hanging out with at work. Right. And now he's doing something that is, like, very positive that I like. And then they t- come to Christ. Or even – and here's the thing, bro. This show is not just designed for people that don't believe. Mm-hmm. It's designed for the people that believe, but yeah. they're kind of lukewarm. Yeah. You what know? You, what do you say at the beginning of your intro? The believers, non-believers, and the confused believers. Yeah. yeah oh, because that's perfect. Thank you, man. And, and, yeah, I've had a lot of people say they really like the intro and stuff. And it's awesome because it's like – I don't even I don't I don't even remember writing it. Uh, that's, listen, that's the <laughs> I don't even remember writing it, dude. Yeah. I love it. I don't even remember. You would love to take credit for it, you know. I know I would love I to. I would love to. I was in my bag, but nah. It, I really don't. I just remember like the intent I felt about like man. I just really wanted to like tell people what I was reading because it was mm-hmm. so powerful. It was mm-hmm. so life changing. It was so eye opening. It was like it was almost like being colorblind and now you see color for the first time you know like of oh the world was so black and white but now i see color oh now my gosh, that's you, powerful. you know what i mean it was, yeah. that's exactly and I, I i don't know where that analogy just came from just now Beautiful. you know like it was just it's just one of those things where you just want other people to experience that because you want to share that with other people mm-hmm. and especially because i've met so many people in my life that i feel like are good people and just are good and i even put up a, a tweet little little tweet rant the other day mm-hmm. where i was saying like I don't care if I met you at work playing hoops. Um, I said another one. <laughs> I don't know if I met you at, or at high school playing or oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if I met you at work playing hoops or telling jokes. Yeah. I got love for you. Like yeah. please 
give Christ a chance. If you ever have any questions and you're curious, please hit me up. I'm here to help, you know, because he would change your life. And it is, man, we're living in a spiritual warfare right now. We're living in a time where uh, we've never seen something like like what we've seen this year uh, as far as demonic energies being so all over our culture and so all over the future of our culture and so few people rising up to be bold in the truth and bold in uh, the way things are supposed to be that are biblically for us. Yeah. And we're becoming, we we're found we're a foundation and we were, um, we we're founded on Christian values here in the United States. The founding fathers all were God fearing men. Mm -hmm. The stinking Liberty bell has a Bible verse on it when they were hitting it and whatnot yeah. for freedom on independence and stuff like that. And, um, for those people that say, the founding fathers had slave. They repented and they let the slaves go. They were the first nation to do that. They were 70 to 70 or 90 years ahead of the curve of every other nation to let go of the slaves. And they actually, the reason they let go of the slaves was because of the biblical teachings that they were diving deep in the word about, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, this nation was founded on Christian values and they're trying to tear that apart right now. Yeah. And I saw that and I see that. And I speak about it. That's why this show is Jesus Jokes in Country. Because it's like we need, there needs to be voices like this. Right. And there needs to be people that are listening to this mm -hmm. that realize that there's not, it's not just CNN and MSNBC, mm -hmm. Yahoo News, yeah. Wall Street Journal. Everything that you read is completely fabricated for a narrative. There's propaganda everywhere. They have billboards everywhere you look trying to jab you up. And, and so they can, so they can own you and control right. you. It's right. the spirit of the enemy. You know what I mean? So. Uh, granted, I mean, there's people out there that have actually, hey, everybody should have a choice. But, right. you know, this is just Zach Rippey's point of view Amen. on the <laughs> when like I, We can all have different views, and that's okay. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we have a responsibility as Christians to take those seats. Yeah, and for and for those of you out there who are listening who are convicted for Christ and who have a passion and are burning for Christ, mm -hmm. you're called upon to be a voice to nations. Mm -hmm. And Amen. How scary is it that Christ said, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father. Mm -hmm. That is that is a very powerful mm -hmm. statement. And why is that powerful? Because people think just because you come to Christ and you come to accept him as your Lord and Savior that your work is done. No, you yes. should. You, you, your, your, your faith is not, you know, decided or your I'm sorry, your um, you being saved doesn't lie on the fact of you bringing um, the word to other people. But. If you're denying your faith, if you're denying what Christ has done for you, if you're denying that Lord, that 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 Christ is Lord, how yeah. scary is that to that to, to understand that He may do that in front of God in the end? Yeah, and if you think times are tough now, like imagine how they're gonna get, and also think back on the persecution that happened with the all the disciples. Every single disciple was beheaded, yeah, and crucified, yeah, and or crucified besides John. John was old head. That's why he wrote Revelation, by the way. I don't know if you know that. He lived pretty old. Wow. Yeah, that's why he was blessed with the opportunity for Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, it's on us. And denying and denying Christ and whatnot, that can be as, and I'm going to say something that's bold, but that can be as simple as, you know, being afraid to share the. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The, 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 the Bible verse on your Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Being afraid to, you know, put that you're saved in your bio. You know, yeah. like. We have people out here putting their pronouns in there, but we have people out here afraid to put son of Christ or follower of Christ Amen. or I walk with Christ or Amen. Christian or, you know, like, and as much as I understand it might make you uncomfortable to do that, but the gospel's uncomfortable, baby. You know, you think Christ was comfortable on that cross? Nah, dog. <laughs> I'm getting a little, a little bold out here, but we're about two hours deep in here. We're definitely going to do part one, part two for this one. But, uh, yeah, man, denying Christ is, uh, it's something that I, I can't do. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm bold about it. You know, I want everybody to to know about Christ and 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 you know, I don't want to go about it the wrong way. I think you and I talked about this. Like sometimes I do feel like I am a little rough around the edges, but I feel like I'll work that. I think God, Christ will work that out through me as time goes on, and as I kind of you know grow in my faith as well, I'll be able to you know be more of who Christ wants me to be. Right now, I'm still you know learning how to reach people you know and it's going pretty well but at the same time you know amen amen and and, and just circling back to your point you know in matthew uh, you know god says not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven mm. but the one who does the will of my father who was in heaven on that day which is the end times when when god when jesus comes back he's on the end day that uh, many will say to me lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me 
Wow. And that's that's a very scary scripture. That, that's like, very that's scary. A very, yeah, it's it's. Like, but it shows you though. It, it is, but it isn't because it shows you the weight of it. Because you and I were talking about this earlier as well. Obviously, we talk about a lot, <laughs> but about how how easy we have it on the other side of the cross. Ooh. Yes, absolutely. We have it so easy, man. People used to have to, in order to be forgiven for their sins, they had to go sacrifice their goats and their animals, yeah. and and carry it to the temple, and it had to be unclean. It had to be a clean. You know, when it can't be no like deformed goat, it had to right. be like prime time real estate. You know, it had to be, you know, it's 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 your bag. You know, mm-hmm. it's the cream of the crop. You know, yeah. you had to sacrifice that, and you had to do a lot of different things. It was very, you know, by the book, uh, and then people weren't willing to do that. You know, and obviously God saw that the that that his people weren't you know living righteously towards him and following his will, and a lot of other things happened, of course, along the, the sense of history. But being able to uh, you know, and God didn't remove the law. All right. God didn't remove, you know, the law of Moses. He fulfilled the law Ooh. with Christ. Talk about it. So us believing in Christ and acknowledging him and listening to what he says and following him and walking with him. That is us living in the law. You yes. know, it makes it a lot easier uh, in a sense of, you know, we don't have to, you know, go do all these things that are out of our kind of like cultural norms. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it is going to be a challenge in some ways and it should be it shouldn't all be rainbows and butterflies of christ man right. and that's the, the again that's what the we're we're trying to be the potter um and and and, and clay analogy thing yeah know, i love that I, saw, I read that in the book today. yeah trying to be like that's we're great. trying to put jesus into like a, a play-doh thing of like mm-hmm. what who we want him to be right right but at the end of the day we gotta we gotta realize that it's not as easy as as you might think and you're gonna learn how to do it in a, in a more efficient way you're gonna learn how to do it the way he wants you to do it and that's why it is about walking with him. You know, you think like Peter and John and, and his disciples uh, year one were like prime time. No. Year two. No. Year mm-hmm. three. No. Listen, when he crucified. Up, up until the time that Jesus was go- <laughs> literally walking to his death on that mm-hmm. cross. They were slacking. Yeah, but they were still following. They were still following. Still Absolutely. Following, yeah. and, and what does that tell you? That it's a it's a, it's a it's an uphill battle. Yeah, and a, guess what? Yeah. As long as we have Christ with us and we're giving him all the glory mm-hmm. and we're allowing the spirit to move through us. Right. What else can he's not asking for any much Absolutely. more than that? You know what I mean? Yeah, and the fact that he protects you from temptation, and protects you from sin, Oof. of like just being around it and just you know closing doors. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's so many times where I feel like he'll just shut something, and I'm like, yeah, all right. I mean, that's he didn't want me there. You right. know, remember that story I told you the mm-hmm. other day with the with the woods? Yeah. You know, like I don't know what the heck was out there, but uh, your boy didn't feel right, and the spirit was moving. Right. So um, I'll share that on the podcast another day. But that was um. I was intense, you know, and there's there's just a lot of and you get more experiences uh, as you as you walk with Christ. You get more of the Holy Spirit on your life. You get more of the revelation. You get more of the relationship. You start to understand things uh, more and you start to know God more. And that's such a beautiful life changing experience. And there's so much to know, baby. There's so much to learn. I told you guys I'm on a five year plan. They they, they do Bible in a year. I do Bible in five years. Yeah. (laughs) And it's because we study it, you know, and it's, and I encourage everybody to read it with like a a pen or a pencil or a highlighter Mm -hmm. and take notes in in the side margins, read the little side excerpts. And you you know, if you have a Bible that has those, read those, it helps you get more context and a deeper understanding. Gotquestions.org is a good one. They have a great Bible called the, the beginner's Bible. Yeah, it's yellow. You can order it from Amazon. Um, I got it from my little brother recently. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's one. And I, I got it. Right? That's the one. New yeah, Living Translation. Absolutely, yeah. and and that one has the, um, the the stuff in the margins where for a new beginner you may have a lot of questions. And a lot of times those questions are answered right then and yeah. there, which is great because sometimes you have to go and Google and go to yeah, God, you know, GodQuestions.org and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and and that's the thing, especially with the parables. You know, you're gonna want to do research on the parables because they have a a, a physical meaning. Mm-hmm. They have a spiritual meaning as well. Big Same time. with the miracles. The miracles always have more than one meaning behind and those them. parables hit hard bro yeah they hit so dude hard. i love the prodigal son one Oof. that one is so good because yeah. it just like it makes you have so much of an understanding of why god wants the sinner yeah you know and you know the brother in that parable um was was salty that mm-hmm. the the brother that left the family right came back after sinning mm-hmm. and doing like all these wild crazy parties and he came back and the father was so excited, leaped for joy, got him decked out in the nicest robe, yeah. killed like the, the fattest calf to have a party that night. Mm-hmm. And the, the brother was salty and he was like, hey, I've been here. I've been faithful this whole time. You've never even let me have like um, a donkey for me and my friends or like a small calf for me and my friends or whatever or, mm-hmm. or a goat for me and my friends, right. something like that. And then uh, 
and then, he, he wasn't the first son; he was the second son. So he, right, his, his inheritance was for the first son. Yeah, but right. but, and, but, but the, it, it but the second, second son, yeah, right, second son was was over here wilding, you right. know. And but the father's love, you mm-hmm. know, and that's the thing. And then when he returned or whatnot, it was a celebration, you know. Right. It was that's how God feels when the sinner comes back. And, what and he it's, said, surely I tell you, heavens rejoices over one sinner coming back mm-hmm. than ninety nine that are righteous. righteous. Yep. We, how amazing is that? That's amazing because it gives you great hope and understanding because we were once that, that prodigal son. We were once Amen. that person. We were yeah. once that sinner. We were once the person that was doing our own will instead mm-hmm. of God's will. You know, we came back and gosh, and that's the thing. God shows us so much love. Like you're saying, like there's been so many things that's happened in this one year since coming to Christ that it, that it has been a celebration. It has been like fruit. It has been like I told you even like uh, financially, like God has been like super blessing since coming to him. And I'm like mind blown because yeah. it's like what like that's that's you would think it would be the opposite you know or, or not the opposite but you just you can't believe it almost mm-hmm. you know it's like um and, and it's just wow there's so many other instances there's so many things that have just happened where it's all been like where exactly where like god needs you to be in that moment you know yeah. you talked about earlier about you know um the, like the waterfall and then um the still water you know mm. there's different seasons for everything amen and uh you know no being able to identify trusting that god is with you in all those seasons yes is powerful very powerful very powerful and a lot of times as christians i know myself in this last season i had a waiting period of a year and a half and where i wasn't doing anything but seeking god and and really not even getting anything i felt in return and 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 obviously i didn't realize that god was working through me until he put me in the season i'm entering right now Mm. and so i think it's very important um to realize that sometimes there's going to be waiting seasons right Mm -hmm. it's not always a season where you're going to be active and you're going to be in your bag and you're Mm going to you know know exactly what your purpose is Um, but in those waiting seasons you're building a lot of mental endurance to overcome those times in life where you're going to be waiting for god to do something right new you know what i mean but when he does it it just gives you that that mental fortitude for next time to trust of even more mm. you know what i mean and for me my last season i was waiting and i was like i got i got like discouraged many times because yeah. i kept asking god for a new job so i can travel and you know just like be back out there again you know mm-hmm. like i was in cali and every time i applied every time i made a move door to shut. do it door shut door mm-hmm. shut just, just like you like you're just like sometimes the door shuts and you're just like why 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 can't it be this way and so that i, I made an instagram post um maybe like two weeks ago and it was about God's will, not ours. Mm. And it was that, that it stemmed from that. And it was me at the end of my waiting um, season. Mm. And, and I made that post because I had finally realized that God was doing something the entire time. He was preparing me. I wasn't ready for that next season yet. Right. And so much growth happened through that waiting that, like, I mean, I, I could probably, I mean, I'm going to start a podcast so y'all will hear about it more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I can't exactly. talk about it too much here. But, um, yeah, man, like, you, you just have to be sure that within that waiting season no matter what's going on around you um whether those waters are still or whether they're raging god is in the storm Mm -hmm. god is in the stillness and he's working everything out for the greater good he's out upon the waters (laughs) (laughs) great i know (laughs) listen we've been rocking that song hey that song's being played again i don't care what the i don't don't care what they say out there yeah if they if you got some haters out there that don't like that song it is what it is shawty Oh, man. But, hey, let's leave it there, man. We got about two hours and ten minutes on the books. We're going to split this up into probably two parts, and then we'll um, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll put that out there in uh, the near future. Maybe we'll even do one tomorrow. Who knows? That's yeah. when we visit Monty. Maybe, Maybe we'll talk about that. a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and uh, definitely enjoyed this, man. It was great having you on for the first time. Thank you, I'm brother. sure we'll be doing this more often. Absolutely. Uh, especially when you have yours. I'd love to be a part of it and help in any way I can. For if sure. you need any advice or uh, just want to have your dog on. If you want me to plug it, I guess I'll plug it. Yeah, I charge you to sponsor or something. You know, you trying to sponsor. You, you want to try and be LaCroix, you can be LaCroix. Hey, listen. Uh, but, yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Make sure you stay tuned for uh, Olivier's uh, podcast that's coming out. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be an awesome thing because, man, there's so many podcasts out there that aren't about Jesus. So it's going to be so nice to have a another Jesus podcast you can tune into uh, on the off days of Not Like Bird Show. Uh, you can follow Olivier uh, at uh, that kid Ali on Instagram. Uh, that's that kid Ollie O L I. Uh, if you ever want to check him out and see his uh, handsome face and see what he's up to in life, and uh, pray for him as he goes on to the next season of life. I'd like to uh, close this out with a prayer for you. 
as well. Uh, my mom suggested I start praying more on the pod, and I was like, all right, you're right, mom. Let me get after it. Uh, I usually feel uncomfortable doing it, but at the same time, I got to get better at it because I'm about to be a pastor, and these people are going to be coming up to me being like, yo, my grandma's sick in the hospital. Can you say a prayer for me? I'm going to be like, all right, all right, here we go. We're going to make sure she get out and have Cracker Barrel, and, and then life is going to be good for her. you know. Or if she gets taken away, that's God's will. You know? <laughs> You know, like, I, I feel like I'm awkward with praying, but I'll get better at it. So I'll pray for Olivia real quick. Uh, dear God, thank you so much for allowing us to get together on this awesome uh, platform that you've given us, God, of uh, being able to reach people that just want your your word and uh, your life and your spirit on their lives. And we just ask you to continue growing the podcast and uh, bringing people to Christ. And we ask you to also bless Olivia's new uh, adventure for putting on for you and glorifying you. And uh, we just ask you to send them the right people to give their testimony to help other people come to you, God. And we also ask you for uh, so much uh, of your presence to be on Olivia's next chapter in life uh, when it comes to opening doors and just making things easy as far as buying a bed and furniture and just getting settled in. As well as uh, hopefully, you know, I'm asking you specifically because I know how important this is, God, for Olivia to have the time, the time to be with you and to find a church and get connected with other people that uh, are brothers and sisters in Christ with you. And uh, even, you know, if you want to bless my, my brother with a uh, godly woman while he's down there that has ties to Tampa, uh, that would just be, you know, magnificent. So we're going to ask you that. Uh, it's a bold prayer, but, you know, you, you're, you're a God of uh, boldness. And uh, we also ask you to uh, bless his new job and his clinicals that he has to do in his one year left of school. And we just thank you so much for our friendship and thank you so much for allowing him to come up here before he goes on down there. And thank you so much for everybody that is listening. And we just ask you to bless them as well and uh, continue just your provision and your uh, guidance and your uh, your hand on the journey that uh, my wife and Malachi and Noah are on uh, with the RV journey. And we ask you to just continue to be uh, speaking life into us and uh, just being there for us. Uh, and in every step of the way and thank you so much god and we love your son and thank you for sending him in jesus name we pray amen amen that was beautiful thank you bro wow i enjoyed that and uh god's god was definitely in, involved in that uh so thank you guys for listening so much uh do me a favor uh share this episode with anybody and everybody that you've ever met in your entire life including uh your grandma that is um you know granny granny need jesus bro that, that's how i feel hey man she does we need we need some grannies. I mean, grannies usually know Jesus. They do. You know, they, they usually know Jesus. I feel like people find Jesus a little bit later in life just because they understand that yo, uh, the clock is ticking. You know, right. but uh, that is a way that you know to understand life. You got to understand death, and to understand death, mm-hmm. you got to understand Christ. So I think a lot of times that people uh, that are on the the upswing that have been blessed to live that long mm-hmm. uh, do find Christ. But I also like that's why it's so important because there could be people. They get taken out early in life, you know, like yeah. Armani. Thank God he was able to come to Christ before that. So we just encourage you guys to share the show. Uh, keep showing love. Thank you for everybody that's bought in a shirt so far. It's been stinking amazing. I have like 15 left, you know, and I ordered 75. So y'all have been awesome for that. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Be on the lookout for the website. It is about to drop any day now. I'm freaking pumped. Uh, I'm so excited. Uh, I'm going to have a newsletter for you guys that I'll be able to, you know, send you out some writings and stuff like that. So just be on the lookout for that. And if you're new to the show, first time listener, you came here for Ollie. Hey, subscribe. Do that on Apple so you get notifications when the new episodes drop. Tune in every week. It helps you kind of stay spiritually aligned with the word. And it also keeps you uh, from listening to uh, the devil's music. <laughs> Olivia's laughing. He, he's trying not to laugh. He's trying, he's trying not to laugh on, 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 on camera. But, uh. Well, love you guys, man. Thank you for listening. I'm being silly right now. It's just because I'm so so excited. My friend's here and he's on the show. So thank you for listening uh, to part two of, I don't know the episode name, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure All it right. Out. See you. Love Bye. y'all. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to the conversation that Olivia and I had, man. We just had the most phenomenal weekend together. Uh, my best friend in the world came up to visit. We just got to have great convos and just uh, have some fun and just quality time. We relaxed. We hiked. We went and saw... Uh, the same hike that Armani went on before he passed. And it was just magical moments that were made uh, while he was here. And uh, I just encourage you, man, if you have a best friend, man, just get get nerdy, man. Just talk about Christ. You know, don't don't be a weirdo. Go ahead and get deeper in your conversations and deeper in your friendships and your relationships. And have that fellowship where you talk about Christ and you pray together. 
and yeah man we prayed before every single meal together we we talked about god openly and we just kind of grew in our faith together while he was out here and i just encourage you if you have a best friend to go ahead and uh to make that make that leap you know because uh, it is awkward at first i'll admit sometimes you just feel like you know a little a little weird before you do it but once you get going man it just feels natural and it feels like the way it should be uh we were made to talk about god the creator and um the son jesus christ so do that for me man uh if you're first time here like i said please subscribe and hey if you're first time here or if you're a second time or third time man there's a lot of episodes for you to catch up on uh don't just come here for the olivia episode make yourself at home take your shoes off go ahead go on back listen to some more episodes get some christ in your life we're very bible centric here we talk about the word of god and relate it to real life and the faith journey is always growing and the the podcast and the ministry is always growing so uh just thank you for being here man we appreciate you and we welcome you with open arms to the show and to everybody that's loyal listeners man part of the birdhouse already just be on the lookout for that website man i'm super pumped about it i can't wait to be able to have like an email list to be able to send out some some cool blog posts and episode notes and just updates about the ministry and everything that we got going on for the kingdom so uh thank you so much for listening to this episode and this show in general. I love you guys, and we'll see you guys soon, all right? See ya.